Are you ready for some football? Well, good, because as you know, it's that time of year. Uh, again, uh, it's time to be writing uh, for football. So I've been busy um, writing some cues, and I want to break down one for you today. Um, it's an epic orchestral hip hop cue. Uh, it's called Eat My Cleats. So you know how we do it. We'll take a listen to it, and then we'll talk about it on the flip. All right, so here we go. Um, as I said, epic orchestral uh, hip hop cue. Um, so let's jump into it. Uh, so the BPM on this is at 140 beats per minute, and the key is F sharp minor. Uh, and so the first thing I want to point out is is that how quickly we jump, uh, or how quickly the setup is to get us into the cue. Um, so as you see, I mean, we have pretty much like a two beat setup um, to get us right in uh, with a riser uh, and a drum fill um, that's going to get us right in there. Let's check that. So that's just it. All we got and we are in to the cue. So one thing is you want to try to get into your cues relatively quickly. Um, just some kind of quick, you know, quick setup. I, I would suggest no more than, you know, two beats, one, two, la, boom, bum, boom, you know, whatever, um, to kind of get you um, right into your cue. And then as, as we've talked about um, in the past, um, you know, we're going to come in because it's four sports, uh, we're going to come in pretty much um, with, with a lot of energy kind of right off the bat um, and this cue is a little different in that so we have a string motif um, going um, and let's see the string motif um, is this um right um, is the string motif and then the bass is a So in this particular regard, the the bass and the string motif kind of carry almost equal melodic weight, um, you know, if you will. So 
but we jump right in kind of, you know, full bore with that. And then, so in terms of our um, bottom carrying, is really, I just have Pandora and Monster Little Brass carrying the bottom. <laughs> So, um, you know, nothing like just those two uh, elements are doing, I, I think, a pretty good job um, of carrying that. And then, of course, our um, string motif. Um, we have our epic uh, string. In octaves. Uh, and then we just add in violin too short, viola, all in octaves and cello. also have a synth um, just to add a little more beef to it and, and in this regard a, a little more grit to it. Then we add the high violin on top of it. And that's pretty much it. Um, and then you hear that um, kind of stereo delay that we have happening um, on the uh, on the synth um, as well. And pretty much what we do is um, you can see the delay here. Um, it's mostly that that quarter delay that we're hearing um, on the right. <laughs> So just to give it a little movement, a little dimension, um, and so it's not, you know, just uh, stiff or whatever. So that is pretty much it for, um, you know, the strings and then uh, what's happening there, right? Um, and of course, then we have an 808. Um, this. For the 808, we are, um, well, hang on, let me show you what we're using first. So we're using the uh, Analog Move um, 808 out of Sublab XL. And the only thing that I do is I'll come in here and I'll, I'll kind of mess with the eight, um, ADSR just a little bit to kind of, you know, tweak it around to get it where I want. Um, so you see the sustain is about it at 46% and the release is at 169 uh, milliseconds, you know, pretty much standard stuff, the distortion. I don't think I really bothered with uh, too much and, you know, the compressor um, or whatever. So uh, that's what we're doing there. Now, something um, that, uh, oh, and then you'll see here, um, and let's bring this over, is, is that I do... Uh, have it side chained um, as well um, to the kit, so um, it's actually um, side chain. And I'll I'll bring up the kit for you, so you can kind of see. Um, oops, um, what is happening there? Okay. So you see the gain reduction that we're getting when the uh, kick comes in. So they're just to uh, try to clear up, you know, a little more space um, uh, for um the kick there so um so we have that and then the other thing but with the bass is i you see i have this thing called bass fills and what i like to do with my bass just to give it a little more interest and dimension is i add uh, i don't know some synthy kind of funky kind of synth things in the bass just to kind of spruce it up a little so you'll hear things like
some little feel things just to kind of give the bass um, a little more vibe now that and then what I use here so I use a totally different sound it's the sub fatty um, but the thing that really kind of gives me what I want there is definitely kind of coming into this um, uh, ADSR section again and as you see I got the sustain all the way up at 100% and you see the release I have a very very long release on it um, at 169 milliseconds and the reason for that is, is so I can get that you know that whole so I want that smooth um, you know moogie smoothie uh, funky kind of bass so when I do my fills um, you know everything is just kind of glued together um, as long as I you know I hold the notes um, down I don't get a chop because I will get a chop if I don't but but if I hold it down then I get that nice smooth kind of run feel it just I, it's something that I like to do on bass just to give it a different vibe and I think it kind of you know gives gives my cues just a different you know type of feel from other you know other cues that might only be rocking an 808 um, or, or something like that and then something that I do you hear just that slight bit of latency um, so something that I do to um, and let me show you um, this screen here. So if you, if I show you over here, um, you see, so obviously, you know, you send everything, um, you know, to a, a particular bus. But what I do is I get a little latency. So when I don't want to have the latency, I just send it straight to the stereo app. And, and I don't have any latency. Um, in terms of very, very, very responsive or whatever. Um, and so typically I'll record the stereo out and then um, I'll send it to its bus. So if you guys got any, you know, solutions uh, for that, you know, let me know. But that that's kind of how I deal with it. So anyway, so that that is the base. And that's how, um, you know, I have um, those set. Uh, and then, of course, um, the drums, um, just pretty, you know, standard fair on our drums. If we uh, go back and just isolate our drums. So cool, as you hear, the timpani is pretty much just an accent for the bottom, but kind of not overdoing it, you know, just accenting, um, you know, certain spots. Of course, stuff that I've talked about before, the chain hits and, and things of that nature. Um, so one thing that I have, I have a couple of different loops, um, you know, kind of playing uh, within. Um, so I have uh, this one, just my hi-hat, just sort of like, you know, some, some trap hats or whatever. You know, just kind of, you know, churning through. And then I have this other loop. And I think this loop is really sort of the lifeblood of my drums. Sorry about that. So, and the thing I like about it is really that tap, 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 tap. It kind of chugs all the way through. I, I, I think it just gives it like a, a certain, um, it, I don't know, a push forward. It just pushes the cue um, forward, uh, if you will. So one thing I wanna show you though, is how aggressively I have it high pass. So yeah, I have it, I have it high pass at a little over um, 400 hertz. So I am cutting out, you know, a ton of what's actually in the cue. So if, if, if I play it for you without being high pass, So, and then if I high pass it. And again, you know, we've kind of talked about that as well. You know, the point, you know, being that we don't, um, 
and I'm sorry, I had your head on the wrong screen. So again, you see the high pass here um, at, um, like I said, around uh, 400, so 414 uh, hertz. Um, you know, and again, point being that we don't need all of that bottom end energy. We don't need all of that stuff kind of cluttering up um, below end. But again, I, I just feel like that that loop. So you hear that like with the kick, just that, uh, just how it kind of drives everything at the clap, the hi hat. And that, you know, besides all the, the symbols and things, and then we have a big uh, gong kind of getting us into our break. So, um, you know, it's not a whole bunch to it, but the, the point is you just really want to make sure, man, that, that your drums, you know, really kind of, you know, smacking and, and trying to find that thing that just really kind of helps you, um, you know, drive things along. So um there there you have the drums um so you know not a whole bunch now the only other thing that happens um is i have this one thing um this uh, you hear it kind of going all the way through the queue and it's just I, I just call it an f sharp one shot it was actually in another key but it's just a one shot this cool little thing And it just gives like the cue, like so much vibe. If you see uh, the sample that I have, um, you know, dropped in here, you'll see that I'm not even using a whole sample. I could have set um, where the sample falls um, and ends, but I just kind of play it and come up off of it. So you see where I play it and stop. So I just play it and stop it, you know, where I want it. And then the other thing um, that I do is I, um, again, I utilize stereo delay and pretty much just utilizing um, the right side. So if you look, and anyway, let's get rid of this. So if you look here, you'll see that I'm on, I hit it and then the delay carried it for the next uh, section. So delay. Hit it, delay. Hit it, delay. So, um, you know, point, again, point being, it just gives a little more interest. Um, you kind of see how I have it set. I pretty much, I got the left side totally off. Um, and then on the right, I got it like at 80%, um, you know, wet, um, giving it a full one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. And, and then you see what the feedback is. But that little thing really sets a vibe so if you listen to like the cue with that in it so i don't know it, for me it just adds something it's something that's really simple um, but I think it really adds something. So that's pretty much the, the entire, you know, first section. So the only thing is, you know, we start very short uh, pickup to get us in. I would say no more than two beats. We're in, we're in full, but, um, but still leave some room for your second half. So you see what I do in the second half is I bring in my high strings and I introduce my horn melody. So when we get to the second half of the break, um, we have this horn melody in. And I love that melody. I think it's it, it's kind of, you know, heroic. So um, it's epic, but it's heroic at the same time. Um, so I think, you know, it could definitely work, um, you know, for, uh, for sports, um, you know, if you will. And then I'm just using the, um, the uh, horn uh, ensemble. 
um, and you know just set to the full mix so um, you know just pretty basic and then I think we have talked about this in the past is one thing that I like to do even though this sounds good <laughs> I like to just make sure so we have some more definition is I'll layer always layer in a short underneath and then we put them together so I just feel like um, you know we just get a little more uh, definition um, just by layering in uh, the short so the own that's the so on the second half, as I said, in terms of building, we bring in the theme. Second half of the theme, we introduce uh, the horn melody, and then we layer in this higher string. Just super super high um, in there as well, um, and that's pretty much it to carry us into our first breakdown. And you notice I said first breakdown. All right, so coming, so the second half of this theme. So pretty standard, all we're doing is in this particular case in our first breakdown is we're pulling stuff out. Nothing more, nothing less, just pulling elements out, right? So we pull out the string motif um, that's happening. We leave in that little F sharp uh, thing that's going on and we live in our low brass in our drums, but everything else kind of pulls out. So we back the energy back, but it still feels nice and aggressive. <laughs> So it still feels aggressive, um, all right? And then you'll notice what we'll do, and it's really like a four bar feel, but since we're at 140, um, it says eight bars, but it's really like, really kind of every four bars we're layering. So then what happens when we get to the next four bars, so come in. So now we just add that little string motif again. To kind of get a get us set up to get back into our theme so one thing I want to point out and this may seem it may seem super super simple but something that you'll notice is what I do um, is when I'm introducing my strings back in here um, in, in this low section right you will notice that what I do is I just add a little pickup just to make it a little more musical, so you hear. Just to know, ba, 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 you know, instead of um, just da 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 da, you know, where it sounds a little more cookie cutter. So little teeny things like that, I believe, um, make a difference in terms of the musicality of your cue. So just try to do, you know, little simple things like that. Make it, you know, kind of make sense. You know, is it a you know make music I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say so I'm um, just that little pickup you know it's kind of I don't know it's just saying something to get us into that next section as opposed to just you know playing the same exact thing just kind of cut and paste hey drop this here drop that there um, you know type of deal so um, just something to something to think about and then you also notice that I have that little bass fill um, pickup kind of going as well so, and it's not overdone, um, you know, if you kind of look at just the cue in terms of those bass fills, they're just here and there. Um, you know, just a little flavor, just a little, add, just a little salt, you know, just a little salt or a little spice, um, you know, just to kind of add something. So, our first breakdown is nothing more than just pulling stuff out, and then the second half of the breakdown, we add a little more back in. Right, and then we're back to our theme. So 
So what you'll notice this time around though, so when we come back to our theme, when we started the cue, the horns weren't in until the second half of the theme, right? But now when we come out of the breakdown into the theme, so the horns are in on the first half of the theme because now, you know, you kind of want all your guns um, blazing when you come back into uh, that theme after the breakdown. So we come back in, um, our horns are in, you know, as I said, uh, come in, so, horns. so pretty much everything is in here. to the second breakdown, there's a couple things um, that happen. So first thing is, this is the first time um, that I introduce some string runs. Um, so we have just some violin and viola cello runs um, going into um, that second breakdown. So we kind of play our, our strings here. And we'll play the synth as well since it's it's doubling as a string. So we have this. And just that, you know, just a little added layer of energy um, to get us into, um, into the breakdown. Uh, and what we have here is I, I've um, showed you guys this before, but the colors adaptive runs. Um, you know, it's real easy uh, and simple to use. You see, I just have it set to one beat. I do have it quantized. Um, and then I have it doing a minor scale going up. Um, so, uh, you know, pretty um, simple there. So if we just play uh, just the runs for you, um, you hear just... <laughs> So that's it, and let's take that out there. So they sound great, and then so I have the high and the low kind of going in there together. Now, we get to breakdown two. Breakdown two is not just now a um, layer stuff out uh, type, type deal, just pull some things out. We actually want to create a little more interest in the queue and make sure that the queue is continuing to move forward so breakdown two is a little different uh, so now what we do um, on breakdown two like i said we introduce the string runs to get us in and now my synth fill bass um, my synth lead and that f sharp one shot are pretty much carrying the breakdown <laughs> You know, short breakdown, you hear, we, we you know, trying to get a, a, you know, just, you know, have some, uh, some cool uh, interest going, um, you know, with the bass feel. So the bass getting us in. Right. So we have that, and then we have the sims. And then the only other thing is we have is this F sharp one shot. drums um, we, we're pretty much you know tugging along in our drums see how so 
So you see how we break everything. And again, it is just for um, creating some interest. So we break everything. And then we have this, uh, this drum kind of uh, feel, you know, one shot thing, um, which is, you know, pretty standard. You know, just a, I don't know, just a, a little, um, you know, one bar uh, feel deal there. And then our runs again, and we modulate um, into um, a new key. So we go up a half step. And in Cubase, the way you can do, or a simple way to do it is you can just um, put in a transpose track, um, which I did. I just put in a transpose track, and then I just tell it um, that I want everything to go up um, a half step. And then you'll see, like, um, you see certain things that have this little note in there, that little thing there. Um, and see, I can set whatever I want to independent. And when you set those certain elements to independent, when you engage the transpose track, those things will not transpose because obviously you don't want your drums to transpose. You want your timpani and stuff like, you don't want your unpitched drums to transpose. So the, the simple way to do that is just to engage, um, you know, just to, uh, make those particular things independent, and then you don't have to worry about um, those particular items transposing. So we we get um, we do our our one bar uh, breakdown, and now we're into our final theme up a half step, and then so how else can we create interest in this last time that the theme is played? So let's kind of talk about that. So the first thing is obviously we transpose. So that creates interest already because it's a little something different. So so the other thing, and, and I've talked about this in the past, that I like to do from time to time is just something different harmonically. And I didn't do a whole bunch this time harmonically, but one thing that I did here is that I, besides transposing, when we, um, instead of going to the four, right, I went to um, really the uh, seven, I guess. Um, but it's the three of four. So instead of playing just the four chord, I played the the um, the three note of the four chord. Um, so that of course made it um, you know just a, a little more interesting. So yeah, that'd be six. Um, and then of course I did that little um, that little run of kind of coming down um, in the the uh, the fill bass um, just to kind of give it a little more interest, you know. And it's nothing, um, but now I actually, when I played the run, obviously I did it in. So I did it in. But it's in this key. Um, and it's nothing but just coming down the scale, just running down the scale, but just something um, to give it a little more interest. So that's the first thing. So we have modulation. We have, um, instead of landing on the four, we land on the three uh, note of the four just to give it a little more interest. And that note is also the melody note as well that now we're playing in the bass. Um, and then the other thing that we do is on the second half of the final theme, we layer in our horns up another octave. All right, so let's kind of identify all those things. I want to play this final theme for you. And so we want to identify modulation. Um, we want to identify um, the bass moving to the three of the four. Of course, the little run in there to add a little more interest. And then, of course, the layering in of the high horns um, to get us out of the theme with a super strong uh, button. All right, so let's listen to that.
strong button on the end so you know very quickly guys i mean that that is it um you know for this cue um again epic uh, orchestral uh, hip-hop so and i'll keep you guys posted on how the cue actually does um you know once once the season um gets started but um i hope that you know this was informative um and um you got something out of it as always if you did please like please subscribe it will certainly uh, help my channel and until next time uh thanks for watching and peace take care and god bless